Welcome to another episode in the web series For the Love of BIM. I am your host, Consul General Sonia Marvel Carter, and with your permission today, I'm going to take you on a fact giving mission. I have been asked so many times what is the difference between a consulate and an embassy, and how does the High Commission factor into all of this, and what does a diplomat do? That I thought it prudent to give you some answers today. It was always my intention to showcase, highlight, and introduce the officers at the mission so you can get a gauge and to see what they do from day to day. But I will now incorporate some of the answers that I will give today with some visuals in later episodes. Hopefully that will tie it all in together for you and you will have a better understanding of our roles and our positions and what each person does and what's the difference between a mission and a consulate and a high commission and, and all of the diplomatic uh, speak. Therefore, it is important that you keep watching, that you not miss any episodes so that you don't miss any explanations or introductions. So let's start. You've asked the difference between an embassy and a high commission and a consulate. Um, embassies are diplomatic missions sent to non-commonwealth countries, while high commissions are diplomatic missions sent to commonwealth countries. The common thing is that they are all diplomatic missions. The name changes depending on if the country is a commonwealth or non-commonwealth country. The other thing that changes, of course, is what you call the head of mission. At an embassy, the head of mission is called an ambassador. At the high commission, the head of mission is called, yes, a high commissioner. And at the consulate general, the head of mission is called consul general. So having established that there are all diplomatic missions, some may ask, what is a diplomatic mission? And why is it needed? A country's diplomatic mission is to function as the channel of communication between the country's government and that of the host country. And diplomats, which are obviously persons who are sent to work in these miss missions, sorry, from their host country, act as official representatives of their country to promote their country's interests and the interests of their citizens in the particular host country. Diplomatic missions are sent not just to countries but to international organizations like the UN, the OAS, WTO, and those ambassadors have similar roles. Have a look at some of Barbados's diplomatic representatives. In order to carry out their work, diplomatic missions must have a strong grasp of the host country's politics, society, and culture. They must be able to explain their country's policies, identify potential threats to and opportunities for their country, and provide political and economic analysis of local conditions to inform decision-making at home and, and obviously to promote trade. And one of the functions of the diplomatic missions is to look after the interests of its citizens in their host country. The work is carried out by the consular section of the mission. Um, the consular posts are usually located in the host country's capital city or where the majority of the nationals or diaspora reside. And like I said, these activities are governed by the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations. Typical consular duties performed are things like, of course, um, renewing passports, issuing travel and emergency documents, handling cases involving children, kidnapping, mistreatment of, of our children and, and citizens, um, assisting nationals detained or imprisoned and those who have fallen ill or been victim of a crime. But I'll stop being general here and speak specifically to uh, Barbados and, and Canada. So Barbados is diplomatic mission in Canada. And this will hopefully give you an idea of the functions and the role of the High Commission and the consulate here in Canada. 
So Barbados has one diplomatic mission in Canada, made up of two main offices, the High Commission in Ottawa, headed by High Commissioner Reginald Farley, and the Consulate General at Toronto, headed by me. And now if you will permit me to explain why Canada is a little different in that, in that they have two offices. The High Commission, be ahead of mission, has direct responsibility for government-to-government -government relations. That is, direct relations between Canada's federal government and Barbados's government. That office, therefore, needs to be in the capital, where the federal government is located. This is where the dichotomy kind of comes in. The government-to-government -government relation is only one part of the function of the diplomatic mission, as I mentioned before, because the other major responsibilities are providing obviously consular services to its nationals, seeking job opportunities for its citizens, promoting trade and business relations uh, for our country as well. But whereas Ottawa is the political capital of Canada, Toronto is the business capital and the Greater Toronto Area or the GTA is home to the majority of the diaspora and pretty much where the action is, not to mention the major international airport for travel in and out of Canada. So voila! That is why we need the consulate at Toronto. That is also why the consulate has four departments, which cover all of the responsibilities of the diplomatic mission. The consular services, obviously performed by the consular section, the promotion of trade and business done via the Invest Barbados department, uh, promoting and marketing our tourism product, the responsibility of the BTMI department and seeking employment opportunities for Barbadians in Canada is managed through our Barbados Liaison Service Department. There is also the role of the honorary consuls, but that is another aspect for another episode. For those of you unfamiliar with this setup, I know it seems like a lot to take in, but suffice to say we are one diplomatic mission with different departments that specialize in particular areas. And when we officially reopen our offices at the Consulate and the High Commission, I will give you an inside look at our team on the job, so to speak, and more about how each department functions. This is important for you to know why. Because if you've been watching from the first episode, I told you that every person in the diaspora is an ambassador for Barbados in their own right. And you therefore not only need to know the product you are promoting in Barbados, but the promotion plan so we can all work together towards a common goal. But let's move on. Diplomatic and consular missions are the responsibility of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign and Trade in Barbados. And the minister with that responsibility is Senator the Honourable Jerome Walcott. Also in that ministry is Minister Sandra Husbands. Now, dispatching ambassadors to foreign countries is not new. It has its roots in medieval times where kings would send trusted lords to one another's countries. And it has come to be recognized that the presence of a diplomatic mission in a country is the formal symbolic sign of friendly relationships between countries. In this instance, Barbados and Canada have had formal diplomatic relations from the time of Barbados's independence back in 1966. It can also be noted that the withdrawal of an ambassador or a diplomatic mission is one of the strongest signals a country can give of its displeasure. In the modern era, it is often the precursor to some sort of sanction being taken against the country, but we won't get into that here. People have also asked, what does a consul general do? First of all, let me tell you that generally speaking, it depends on the mandate of your particular government and of course the jurisdiction in which you work. But I will give you a short look into my tasks and by the time you see the follow-up episodes on the functions of the others at the consulate, it should give you a better picture and understanding of our roles. As was mentioned, a CG or Consul General is the head of mission at the consulate and therefore has responsibility for all that happens at the consulate. But pre-COVID, a lot of my time was spent engaging the diaspora at christenings, parties, functions, fundraisers, picnics, birthday celebrations, general limes, touring businesses and other events. I also spent time with our Caribbean brothers and sisters supporting their events. I met regularly with my Caribbean diplomatic corps 
to ensure we could cooperate on matters and support each other on issues, as well as monthly meetings with the other 90 plus countries represented in Canada. The parties and the events and the limes are what most people see and know. In the office, however, there is a lot of report writing, research, planning, managing the office generally, and other administrative work, which is much less known. During this COVID-19 pandemic, there are still many meetings, reports, research, and planning going on, especially trying to find innovative ways to carry out tasks and keep our country afloat by ensuring our relations with Canada and our diaspora are still strong. But there is little to none of this and much more of this. Of course, you still need to make time for family, friends, and just general quiet time. As you ask questions, I will attempt to incorporate the answers into the episodes. But now I hope you have a better understanding today of embassies, high commissions, consulates, ambassadors and high commissioners and consuls general and the role we all play. And what is important to note is that we do it all for the love of country. In our case, we do it all for the love of BIM. As I said in another episode, I will highlight the functions and the role of the high commissioner, the honorary consuls and the other officers in the mission. But we're out of time for today. So that's it for episode four in this series for the love of BIM. See you next week. But until then, please be safe. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.